Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today to observe our Overdose Awareness Day and to celebrate 30 years of Baltimore City Health Department's Community Risk Reduction Services Syringe Exchange Program. My name. Yes. My name is Brittany Spencer and I'm the Director of Overdose Prevention with the Baltimore City Health Department. Today, thank you. Today we honor the memories of those we've lost. We acknowledge the pain of the families and friends who grieve them. And we stand in solidarity with those who are struggling with addiction. The overdose crisis continues to take an overwhelming toll on our communities with lives being lost at an alarming rate. In Baltimore, the number of lives lost is nearly is three is more than three times the number of homicides. These statistics do not just are not just numbers, but real individuals, families, neighbors grappling with the impact of this epidemic. The emergence of powerful substances like fentanyl and xylazine has intensified this public health crisis. The Baltimore City Health Department is steadfast in its commitment to address both the ongoing challenges and evolving threats we face. Today, we come together and let us recognize both the gravity of the crisis and the incredible resilience that defines our city. As we move through today's program, you will hear from some of you will hear from our mayor, our interim health commissioner, and panel experts who will be discussing the history and growth of harm reduction in Baltimore City. Thank you to the Motor House for hosting us today, and thank you to all of our amazing vendors behind us here uh, for being here today. Now, I would like to introduce the Baltimore City's Mayor, Brandon Scott. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Or as we say, good after morning. Good after that morning, everybody. And thank you, uh, Madam Director, for the introduction. And thank you all uh, for being with us to observe International Overdose Awareness Day as a city. Uh, this, of course, marks the 10th year that the City Health Department has hosted an and an official event to observe the day which underscores uh, our commitment to this effort and to honor those who we have lost to overdose, support the families and communities that were impacted and continue to be affected, and reaffirm our commitment to uh, doing this work with compassion and resources. While the official International Overdose Awareness Day is Saturday, we as a city want to ensure that we came together in a way that adequately acknowledged it acknowledges this day. Early this morning, as you all know, uh, we gathered at City Hall to officially proclaim that today is our city's official observance of the day and to sign an executive order outlining the structure of how we will utilize the opioid litigation settlement money that we have recently secured. Part of that announcement included an allocation of $20 million to the health department to support their work immediately. And we know that overall, uh, this funding will be a game changer and offer uh, us absolutely necessary resources to tackle uh, this epidemic. As I said earlier today, that this has never been about whether Baltimore has the, the government agencies or the community organizations that can do this work and have been doing this work. This is about them now having the resources uh, to take that work to the next and necessary level. Uh, this day is as important to so many of our residents and to me personally. Uh, this time last year, I gathered with many of you not too far from here, and we talked about explicitly about the impact this epidemic has had in our communities. We talked about the fact that this epidemic kills nearly three times as many as people in our city as gun violence, and now even more as we've seen a uh, promise and progress in the fight against gun violence. With over 1,000 lives lost to overdose in 2022 and over 900 in 2023, in Baltimore, the tragedy of overdose touches each and every one of us. As one of, of who has felt the impact myself, I want to extend my condolences to all the families impacted by substance use disorder and overdose. I also want to recognize the friends and families of lost loved ones, the activists fighting for policy reform, the health care and harm reduction workers, the tireless advocates here today, and those who are out on the street right now. And I encourage you to remember them that together we can end overdose. 
This year marks, as we know, the 30th anniversary of the Baltimore City Health Department's Community Risk Reduction Program providing mobile syringes services in Baltimore City. We have frequently, yes, 30 years. It's not uncommon for Baltimore to be on the cutting edge of this fight, and Baltimore City was one of the first jurisdictions in the country to provide a syringe and harm reduction services and has been a model uh, nationally. Since its exception, the program has distributed over 17.6 million syringes and connect connected... 3,000 residents to treatment. As we move forward, let us carry with us that spirit and that strength that inspired those who first fought for programs like the Needle Exchange. We're entering in a new era of our fight against overdose as we approach the end of this lawsuit, and I'm hopeful uh, that the potentially life-changing impact that it can have for so many Baltimoreans. Let that hope drive us all together that we can and will make a difference. Together, we will build a Baltimore where every life is cherished and every person has the opportunity to, to thrive into their full life. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you again. I have to give again a shout out to my, my forever mayor. He's always the mayor to me. If I'm in the room with Mayor Smoke and someone says, Mr. Mayor, I say, sir, they're talking to you. Uh, but I have to, to thank Mayor Smoke for his boldness and his leadership and setting the framework for us to be able to handle this issue with the appropriate care and doing the appropriate things at a time when it wasn't popular to do so uh, so many moons ago. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, and for setting it up for me to take it to the next to the next level. And with that, I will turn it over to our Interim Health Commissioner, Mary Beth. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Thank you all for being here today as we gather to recognize International Overdose Awareness Day and the 30th anniversary of the Health Department's syringe exchange program. In doing so, we are bringing much needed attention and awareness of substance use while remembering and honoring those we have lost to overdose. The opioid epidemic is unprecedented and our response needs to be unprecedented. And traditional strategies alone are not going to decrease the number of overdoses. We must meet people where they are, provide access to low threshold care, like street-based medicine and harm reduction services. We must do this not because it is, the, it is the, just because it is right, but because it works. Today we also celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Baltimore City Health Department's syringe exchange program. Harm reduction interventions like syringe exchange are effective, scientifically proven, and compassionate prevention strategies that reduce harms of substance use disorder and communicable disease. Since the inception of the city syringe exchange program in 1994, the HIV transmission rate among injection drug users has decreased from 64% to under 10%. BCH, BCHDs, sorry, what am I doing? You're good. Oh, okay. Um, BCHD's program has served as a national model, um, providing consultation to other jurisdictions and health departments who are working to implement similar programs. And the city supported public policy change in 2016 that led to state syringe exchange expansion legislation that has allowed for community-based organizations in Baltimore City to apply to become authorized syringe service programs. Today, there are eight of these programs in offering the services in Baltimore City. While much work has been done, we know that there is much more to do. Today, we remember those we have lost and we celebrate the strength we have when we work together. Thank you. Who's next? I would now like to introduce Derek Hunt. 
who works in Baltimore City Health Department, Harm Reduction Program. Hi everyone, Derek wasn't able to make it today, so I'm gonna read a few words about him and then we're gonna read the proclamation out loud. Um, so in June this year, oh, and I'm Dr. Christine Oboe. Um, I'm the Assistant Commissioner for the Bureau of Ryan White and Community Risk Reduction Services. Uh, thank you. Um, in, in June of this year, Mr. Hunt retired from his role as the Director of Community Risk Reduction Services after more than 20 years of service at the Baltimore City Health Department. Thank you. Derek's journey with BCHD began with his role as a health educator. He was promoted to van supervisor, then to program manager in 2007, where he was instrumental in several key initiatives, including the launch of the Stand Alive program and women outreaching to and the Women Outreaching to Women program. Derek began his role as program director, where he served in his in that capacity for eight years in. Um, 2017. Um, while at BCHD, Derek remained committed to client care, to client-centered care, and he was an advocate for offering for offering opportunities that were inclusive of those affected communities and those with lived experience. In his retirement, Mr. Hunt leaves a legacy of advocacy for those with lived experience, um, and we are very proud of his service and very grateful for his service. Now Jeffrey Long, the Acting Director of Community Risk Reduction Services, will read the Mayor's Proclamation. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Um, City of Baltimore, Certificate of Recognition. On behalf of the people of Baltimore, I am pleased to present this certificate to Derek Hunt. In recognition of 24 years of dedicated service with the Baltimore City Health Department, you are to be commended for your long-time commitment to excellence and improving the lives of our residents. On behalf of the people of Baltimore, I offer my sincere thanks for your dedication and wish you a long, happy, and well-deserved retirement. Congratulations. Brandon M. Scott Mayer. And we'll make sure this gets to Derek. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All right, you guys have me another time. I'm here to announce, to introduce our artist. Um, I would like to introduce Yawande Kotan Davis. Um, she's a Nigerian-American visual artist based right here in Baltimore. Um, while her previous career as a population health administrator lends to her expertise in the intersection of health and mental wellness and r racial justice, um, her Nigerian heritage and Southern upbringing lends to her love of stories and storytelling. As such, Yawande utilizes her work to celebrate, depict, and reframe narratives that have been inadequately or falsely delivered. With a focus on traditional media and public art, Yawande centers the layered experiences of black folks, most often women and children, by taking a special interest in their narration as a source of inspiration and truth. Through her approach in various media, medias, Yawande's work, Yawande's work serves as a vehicle for community care and highlighting our connectedness, inciting joy, and creating space for healing. The works of With Dignity, Stories of Triumph and Recovery, are the first intentional union of her healthcare background and art practice. Yawande will now come up and share more about her current exhibition, With Dignity. And she has a special guest. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me slash us. Um, my name is Yawande Katoon Davis. Um, as she mentioned, I wanted to, I guess, cordially invite you all to an ongoing exhibition that is at 106 North Utah Street. It is called With Dignity, 
stories of triumph and recovery. Um, I worked in healthcare for several years um, in our hospitals, and I recruited, hired, advocated for, worked alongside many individuals who are in recovery um, from Baltimore City. And I got to learn a lot about them and their stories and their backgrounds. And despite what you know, mainstream media may think, we're not very different. Um, and I needed the world to know that and to see that. And so I sat down with seven individuals from Baltimore City, interviewed them, got to hear their stories, took their pictures, painted their portraits, um, and we celebrated them at the exhibition's opening last Friday at Genius Youth Studios, if anybody's familiar with Black Genius Art Show. Um, the exhibition goes through the 31st, so you have a couple of days left to check it out. Um, after that, the exhibition will be online, um, and everything will be on my social media and my YouTube channel, et cetera, but um, I thought it very important to hear firsthand stories of individuals who are in recovery, especially given the narrative that our city gets, that our people get, and the stigma that surrounds substance use. Um, and so thank you all for having me slash us. Um, and just want to make sure you all know about the exhibition and hopefully can check it out, 106 North Utah Street. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for your attention. Now we will have a break to visit our vendors and enjoy some refreshments, and we will reconvene at 3 o'clock for our panel. Thank you all. Yeah.